Today we will uh, speak about Surah Al-Shams. Surah Al-Shams is a Meccan Surah. And uh, the name of the Surah is, according to the majority of the books of Tafsir, is Al-Shams. Uh, it was revealed after Surah Al-Qadr and before Surah Al-Buruj. And there is no particular reason for the revelation of Surah Al-Shams. Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَالشَّمْسِ وَضُحَاهَا As we spoke before about oaths that Allah Azza wa Jal gives, Allah Azza wa Jal gives an oath by whatever He wills subhanahu wa ta'ala from His creation to, indi to indicate the importance of that sworn by uh, or to bring the uh, attention to people's minds and hearts the signs and the significance in that uh, creation uh, that Allah Azza wa swears by. Allah here is swearing by Ash-Shams and Al-Duha, by the sun and its brightness. Allah Azza wa is giving an oath in general by the sun, but in particular by that brightness, that period of time where the sun uh, is, uh, starts rising and its uh, rays and its light spreads uh, all around. Uh, this is the period usually where the sun's light is the clearest uh, and uh, the most beautiful. I'm sure many of you I've seen the sun when it rises, you know, as it completely rises, it's just a beautiful feeling. During the winter, the winter this is where the, the sensation of warmth starts, uh, people start feeling it. Uh, and it's very refreshing during the winter to feel that. Uh, and in, uh, during the summertime, uh, it's before the sun actually becomes hot. That period is the coolest. Uh, period or one of the coolest periods uh, of the sun. Uh, Ibn Ashur has a, a beautiful uh, statement. He said, this is a uh, metaphorical similitude Allah is given. Uh, Allah Azza wa is resembling Islam to the sun. The, the, just as the uh, sunlight spreads and illuminates the globe, Islam came and it uh, removed the darkness of jahiliyyah and spread the light uh, of guidance uh, and tawheed of Allah Azza wa Jal. And just like, he continues to say, just like the, the light of the sun spreads all around, this is an indication that Islam will spread, spread uh, all around. Uh, the second verse, Allah Azza wa Jal, continues to swear saying wal qamari idha talaha and by the moon when it follows it the moon follows the uh, sun in its light and there's another indication uh, uh, tafsir saying that the moon uh, actually reflects the sun uh, the sun's light uh, the uh, the issue of the moon and nights uh, is something that has a special relationship between it and a human's heart. You know, at, at night when it's a full moon, uh, you feel uh, the peace and tranquility. And when one is secluding himself, uh, calling upon Allah Azza wa Jal, uh, in the darkness of the night where the only light is that light of a full moon, there's a special feeling that one gets uh, it, it becomes sentimental and emotional uh, and it's moving for uh, to the person uh, Allah Azza wa Jal continues to say and by the day when it displays it it referring to uh, the earth the uh, the daylight uh, exposes everything uh, on earth. Uh, this light of the day has its impact on people's lives 
and effects, and it's very evident. Uh, simply said, uh, this is the time when Allah Azza wa Jal facilitated for people to go and uh, seek their provision uh, to put bread on the table, as they say. Uh, and with the tendency of man uh, forgetting or neglecting, you see, when when something is is uh, overlooked, you for example. Uh, you see something hanging on the wall after a day or two okay the first day or two you see it okay nice 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 and then it becomes part of the wall it's not noticeable anymore so Allah Azza wa Jal uh, reminds us with some of these signs in different verses uh, of the Quran uh, to wake our hearts up and our conscious up and to make us reflect and think of the greatness of Allah Azza uh, And then Allah Azza wa goes to say, وَاللَّيْلِ إِذَا يَغْشَاهَا And by the night, when it covers it, when it conceals it, again referring to the uh, earth, concealing uh, is the contrast of exposing and uh, uncovering the day and uh, the night. Uh, Allah Azza wa says, after that, and by the sky and he who constructed it subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, when one refers to the sky or to the heavens the first thing that comes to mind is that big dome that's above us you know that's well constructed that has all these stars, stars uh, planets uh, galaxies, all of these, some known and some still unknown uh, to human beings, uh, those floating in their orbits. Uh, we see the sky, we see how well constructed it is, and we see how firm it is, uh, and we know that this is an indication and a sign to the reflect, reflecting the greatness of Allah uh, Azza wa Jal, who's keeping it. Uh, together Allah Azza wa Jal uh, says in the Quran Inna Allah yumsiku samawati wal ard an tazula wa la inzalata in amsakahuma min ahadin min ba'di Allah indeed Allah holds the heavens and the earth lest they cease and then if someone else was to be holding it it would cease so Allah Azza wa Jal, again, is directing our vision, our sight, our hearts, our minds to these signs in the universe, these cosmic signs. So we reflect upon and remember His greatness, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's for those who disbelieve, a clear sign, things that they see with their own eyes. As we repeatedly said, these are tangible matters. No one can deny the existence of, and no one can deny the greatness of the Creator who uh, created them and uh, maintained them in a precise system, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And by the earth and He who spread it. Allah Azza wa Jal spread the earth, facilitated it uh, for mankind, and their animals as well uh, and made it a means and a place for their livelihood uh, Allah Azza wa Jal put features and qualities in this on this earth or in the earth that made uh, life easy uh, and maintainable uh, and if any of these features would go out of order then people's lives uh, would be destroyed. And when Allah Azza wa Jal uh, again swears by these creatures of His, subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, it's to direct our attention to it. As Allah Azza wa Jal says, لَخَلْقُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ أَكْبَرُ مِنْ خَلْقِ النَّاسِ Indeed, the creation of the heavens and the earth uh, is greater than the creation of people. 
So those who deny creation and resurrection, when, they, when Allah Azza wa Jal addresses, addresses them with this logic that you see how magnificent this creation is, how huge it is, how complex it is, how precise its system is. Now this is greater than your creation. So isn't the one who created them able to create you and put you to death and then bring you back to life? Indeed he is, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَنَفْسٍ وَمَا سَوَّاهَا فَأَلْهَمَهَا فُجُورَهَا وَتَقْوَاهَا Two verses. And by the soul and he who proportioned it, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah Azza wa Jal created it and put in it by nature inclinations. Allah Azza wa Jal gave us the tools to uh, think and make decisions. Allah Azza wa Jal gave us the tools to be able to decide what's right and what's wrong. And out of His mercy, He showed us what's right and what's wrong. فَأَلْهَمَهَا فُجُورَهَا وَتَقْوَاهَا And inspired it, its wickedness and righteousness. Right? He instilled in you, by nature, by nature people say, killing is evil. They don't have to study it. No one has to come and tell you rape is evil. You know this by nature. So Allah Azza wa Jal instilled in mankind nature to distinguish between what is evil and wicked and what is uh, correct and righteous. And the scholars said regarding these uh, verses that uh, mankind is created with uh, dual natures, dual ability, uh, dual resi readiness, right? Uh, meaning in you, there is something inclined towards good and something inclined towards uh, evil. So you have this in your nature. And you have the readiness to either do this or do that. Direct yourself to piety or to evil. Uh, and this nature that Allah Azza wa Jal created us with is to test us through. He gave us the will. Everything is predestined, but He gave us the will to decide. He gave us the tools and He gave us these instilled natures so that He tests us, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And out of His mercy and bounty, he subhanahu wa ta'ala did not leave us unattended. He sent messengers and messages. And after them scholars who carry the heritage of prophets and messengers, which is the knowledge, to guide people and show them what's right and what's wrong, so that they assist them and help them maintain themselves on the uh, right path. قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَّاهَا وَقَدْ خَابَ مَنْ دَسَّاهَا He has succeeded who purifies it and he has failed who instills it with corruption. So Allah Azza wa Jal instilled these inclinations by nature, right? This readiness. And then the result is that people will split. Some will go on the right side and some will go on the left side. Right side meaning piety and left side meaning wickedness and evil, right? And these are the only two categories of people. Allah Azza wa Jal here is confirming success to those who take it to the right side, to make, who maintain it on the right path. And is also confirming Failure and loss to those who take it to the uh, opposite side. Then Allah Azza wa Jal gives an example of those who uh, fail, those who in use their inclination to evil and corruption and submit to that by one of the nations 
in the past. كَذَّبَتْ ثَمُودُ بِطَغْوَاهَ Thamud denied their prophet by reason of their transgression. Allah Azza wa Jal spoke about the story of Thamud in different parts of the Quran. Uh, and how he subhanahu wa ta'ala punished them severely. But in this, in this uh, surah, in this particular position in the Quran, Allah Azza wa Jal uh, is stating that the reason they denied is that they transgressed their limits, is that they went beyond boundaries. Allah Azza wa Jal says, إِذِ انْبَعَثَ أَشْقَاهَا فَقَالَ لَهُمْ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ نَاقَةَ اللَّهِ وَسُقُوْيَاهَا فَكَذَّبُوهُ فَعَقَرُوهَا فَدَمْدَمَ عَلَيْهِمْ رَبُّهُمْ بِذَنْبِهِمْ فَسَوَّاهَا وَلَا يَخَافُ عُقْبَهَا إِذِ انْبَعَثَ أَشْقَاهَا When the most wretched of them was sent forth, he went to kill the she-camel, the sign, the miracle Allah Azza wa Jal sent to the people of Thamud. فَقَالَ لَهُمْ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ نَاقَةَ اللَّهِ وَسُقُيَاهَا And the Messenger of Allah, Prophet Saleh alayhi salatu wa salam, said to them, Do not harm the she-camel of Allah or prevent her from her drink. فَكَذَّبُوهُ فَعَقَرُوهَا فَدَمْدَمَ عَلَيْهِمْ رَبُّهُمْ بِذَنْبِهِمْ فَسَوَّهُ But they denied him and killed her. So their Lord brought down upon them destruction for their sin and made it equal, leveled it. Allah Azza wa Jal leveled the earth as a form of punishment. وَلَا يَخَافُ عُقْبَهَا And he, the Almighty, does not fear the consequence thereof. Allah Azza wa Jal is not asked about what he does. As Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran, لَا يُسْأَلُ عَمَّا يَفْعَلُ وَهُمْ يُسْأَلُ He is not asked about what he does, but they are asked. Now, the most wretched, the most miserable of the people of Thamud was the one who rushed and hastened to go and kill the she-camel. And now when they asked Prophet Saleh alayhi salatu wasalam for a sign, proving his truthfulness, Allah Azza wa Jal gave them a, a sign right before their own eyes. But Saleh alayhi salatu wasalam set a condition upon them. He said, this is the camel, the she camel of Allah. Two conditions, you don't harm her and you don't transgress the days that where she has to drink from the water. The water was alternated between them and her, but they transgressed. Now, one might say, the one who killed the she-camel is a person Allah refers to here as the most miserable or wretched, right? So why was the entire Thamud destroyed and punished? Well, this is a law. This is one of the laws of Allah Azza wa Jal that he put between people is that though he was one, yet they approved. They did not prevent. لُعِنَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِنْ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ عَلَى لِسَانِ دَاوُودَ وَعِيسَ بْنِ مَرْيَمْ ذَلِكَ بِمَا عَصَوْا وَكَانُوا يَعْتَدُونَ كَانُوا لَا يَتَنَاهُونَ عَمْ مُنْكَرٍ فَعَلُوا Cursed are those who disbelieve from the children of Israel on the tongue of Dawood and Isa, the son of Mary. 
because of their disobedience and transgression. What is that? They used to not forbid evil when they see it done amongst themselves. So when evil is done and people refrain from forbidding it, they collectively become deserving of the destruction and punishment of Allah Azza And this is a warning to us Muslims. That the issue of forbidding evil and enjoining good, Al-Amru bil Ma'rufi wa nahi wa anil munkar, is a very, very essential act of worship in Islam. And when it stops, then evil will spread and overwhelm. Ignorance will overwhelm. And evil will become virtue in the minds and hearts of people. And virtue will become evil in the hearts and minds of people. And we see this. You go and address some people about certain matters, certain evil, and they say, SubhanAllah, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with what we're doing? What's wrong with what you're doing? Yeah, everybody does that. Does that make it right? Well, it does when no one forbids it. People become under the impression over time that there's nothing wrong with it. Something that's widespread at least in the, in the uh, Arabic communities, is that a cousin is just like your sister. Right? Your cousin is like your sister. This is in the, the Indian subcontinent as well, uh, as I see some people nodding their heads. Right? And it could be in, in, in other places among the Muslim countries. Right? So... When you refrain from shaking her hands or mixing with her or gazing at her, they say, what's wrong with you? This is like your sister. So this evil has turned into virtue and maintaining ties with kin folks. She's your kinship. You see? You see how it becomes, how evil is perceived as virtue as a result of refraining and abandoning enjoining good and forbidding evil. Now, this is a terrifying scene Allah Azza wa Jal is describing here. Dam dam, leveling. You know, when, when, you, when you come to something and you level it, you leave no trace of anything on it. And this is what happened to the people of the moon. No trace was left. Allah Azza wa Jal leveled them to the ground. Allah Azza wa Jal flipped the rope upside down. Subhanallah. This is scary. It's scary for different reasons. First of all, it, it shows you how powerful Allah is, subhanahu wa ta'ala. How mighty Allah is, how strong Allah is, and how weak we are. And it also is scary because you never know what is the sin that will make you deserving of the punishment of Allah Azza wa It's also scary because you don't know the type of punishment Allah Azza wa will send down on you or me. If we disobey him, we ask Allah Azza wa to protect us. وَلَا يَخَافُ عَقْبَهُ Allahu Akbar. You know, this verse is amazing. Allah Azza wa is saying, He subhanahu wa ta'ala fears no consequence. How can he fear the consequence of anything when he is the Almighty? He is the all-powerful. He is the creator. In his hands is everything. Kun, be, and it is. He puts you and me to death any second he wants. 
He can destroy us by any of his soldiers. And his soldiers are not only angels. Have you not seen the punishment of Allah through illness? Through poverty? Hunger? Allah Azza wa Jal can send people as his soldiers upon you. وَمَا يَعْلَمُ جُنُودَ رَبِّكَ إِلَّا هُوْ And none know or knows the soldiers of Allah Azza wa Jal except Him. Wind, heat, cold weather. All of these are soldiers of Allah Azza wa Jal. Depression, anxiety. All of these are soldiers of Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah Azza wa Jal does not fear the consequence of anything He does because He is Allah. He is the Creator. We ask Allah's protection. How can Allah Azza wa Jal fear? When He's the one who created fear itself. And he instilled it in people's hearts and minds. This concludes uh, Surat uh, Shams. We will stop here, inshallah. And in the following session, inshallah, we will address the following Surah. Subhanakallah, alhamdulillah, ashadu an la ilaha illa ant, astaghfiruka atubu.